going to tie a favorite trout nymph today. This is the Bitch Creek nymph, and it is a stonefly imitation, as well as a lot of people will use this for trout fishing out west where they have salmon fly. I've used it for trout. It does, it does very, very well. I've also used it for panfish and bass. Not as many bass. I just don't nymph fish for bass that often, but it is effective and it'll work. But it's an interesting fly because the abdomen here is woven on. This uses what's called a tiger weave in it. And it's not a complicated weave, but it adds a nice effect to it because you want to keep the bottom one color and the top another color. So I thought I'd throw it in there, kind of introduce people to woven fly. So that's the Bitch Creek. I'll get started. Before I actually start the Bitch Creek, there's something I want to show you here. This is the tiger weave that is used for the abdomen on the Bitch Creek. The actual Bitch Creek uses a black and yellow chenille. It's a little bit harder to to see, I imagine, you know, the quality is, is good enough to see on there. But there's some nuances to this weave that are uh, kind of tough to to get a, your head around to start out with. It's not a hard weave, it's, it's pretty simple and easy. When I actually do the fly, you'll probably be able to follow along pretty easy. I'm gonna try and angle this a little bit easier um, like this, so that you'll be able to see the whole, whole weave a little easier. Now, at the same time, there are some things to take into consideration when you're doing this. Now, I've dyed the yellow on one side and this pink on the other. And I'm going to use those because I think it's going to be easier for you, the viewer, to discern what it is that I'm trying to do here. The Bitch Creek has a black and yellow, and the black goes on top and the yellow goes on the bottom. When you do this weave, you're going to take <clears throat> the yellow in your left hand, the black in your, or in this case, the pink in your right hand. You're going to go ahead and bring that over. The yellow is going to go over the top and then underneath, like this. Okay. Then the black or the pink goes straight over this way, once again, you go over the top and then underneath the hook shank, like that. Then you bring this back over the top, over around the black, under the hook shank, to the other side. Back over, around the top, under the hook shank, and back to this side, and then so you're always keeping what would be the black on top, or in this case, the pink on top. Yellow is on the bottom. However, there's some things to consider here, which I'm gonna show you in just a minute when I undo this. So keep in mind that your, your black, or what is in your right hand, simply goes back and forth. The Yellow is going to wrap around and then come underneath, wrap around and then come underneath, like that. Then you end up with all one color on top, all one color on the bottom. Now, this cord is rather big, and so therefore it's not as good as I would like, I suppose, for what I, I need to demonstrate to you. But we'll try, we'll give it a try. You'll notice on the Bitch Creek, if you look up any images of it, 
as well as on the ones that I've tied here, you try to get a nice, right on the outside right here, just a nice even line of the yellow across the top on both sides. What I mean by that is, as I, let me get this over the other side here, as I am bringing the black over here, right, so I, I'm bringing the black over to this side, I'm going to wrap around it and then come underneath. When I do that, there's a couple things to consider. I'm going to be bringing this black or pink over to my side. When I do that, if I pull too hard, I'm bringing the yellow up to the top of the hook shank, like that. If I don't pull hard enough, then the yellow is going to pull the black down around to the bottom of the hook shank, like that. The other thing is, you're going to, no matter what, by doing this, you're going to get a Oh, what do I say? A flattened abdomen, something that's a little more um, lateral. If you look at this, the top here and the bottom here, it is definitely flat. And that's just because of the wraps or the knots that you have on the outside. So when you're doing this, one of the things you want to be observant of, especially after you start to kind of get a handle for for how this is done. You want to be observant that you're putting just enough pressure on the yellow and the black that it's going to keep that transition between the two right on the side. You're also going to keep pressure, so backward pressure, so that it stays tight against towards the back and you're not leaving gaps in this. Hopefully you all are able to see this a little bit better. I'm doing this on, this is a R75 number four. This is a number four R75S hook, so it's a little bit longer. Now that narrowed up a little bit in the front because I have the two materials tied along the sides there. But as you can see with this, I'm pretty consistent in terms of the pink and the yellow, and it's a nice clean line straight across there, as well as on this side, and that's straight across there. And that's simply by keeping that tension correct between the yellow so it doesn't pull the, the pink or black down here and the pink doesn't pull the yellow up top. So hopefully that will help you when it get, comes time to actually do the weave on this. So I'll get started with the, the actual fly now. So this is a Mustad R75. Uh, just a regular R75 it is a downturned eye. This is in a size 6. This is a 5X long hook shank. You could go with, say, um, R74, which is a 4X or possibly even 3X long. I've seen tied on. I just think the proportions look better. Now, this is large, a size 6 hook. So you might want to go down to an 8 or a 10, depending on what you're tying. First thing I'm going to attach is my lead. This is a uh, 0.025 lead-free wire. I'm going to put about 19 or 20 wraps of lead on there. You're essentially filling up the, the hook shank pretty much with lead on this. Stoneflies are larger nymphs that 
uh, right down on the bottom most of the time. So you want this to be a heavily weighted nymph that's going to really stay down around the bottom. We'll smooth those tags down. I do want to debarb this hook. I'm going to attach my thread. You could use a larger size thread on this if you wanted, like a, uh, a 140 denier. Matter of fact, I think that's what I'm going to use on this. This is a UTC 140 denier in black. You could use a 6 aught in Danville too, but a lot of wrapping back and forth on this, and a larger size thread facilitates that a little bit more. I want to attach my thread just a little bit behind the eye of the hook, run down to the lead, put light wraps all the way to the back of the lead, and then to start building up a little bit of a thread dam back there, and as well as then bring my thread back up to the front. I don't want to or need to build as much of a thread dam up front. This stonefly has rubber legs on the front and the back. To mimic the antenna, I'm using some round, medium rubber legs and white. You could also use black. What I did is I cut a, a strip of this about an inch long. That way I can take two of these off and just tie this in. I do want to tie that in and make certain... I get it tied in right on top of the hook shank. And then I want to tie it down so it's right, really pinched down right behind the eye of the hook. Don't go over the eye of the hook because what we're looking to do is make certain that in the end, when these are split, they're kind of poking up a little bit. You start to tie these rubber legs in. The rubber will kind of compress on you. So that's one way of tying the rubber legs in. The other thing you could do if you wanted, we'll do this for the back here, is get your thread back down to the end, take your rubber leg material, and cut it long. So I'm cutting this about inch and a half. You're going to extend it off the back about as long as you want, maybe a little bit longer, and then let it go ahead and go up over the lead a little bit, like this. You could wrap it down on the lead if you want, or just tie it off right here and then just clip it. So if working with a short little piece like this is more difficult, then just use a longer piece and then clip it off. And I'm going to leave my thread just a little bit above, right before the center point of the shank of the hook. Now, as we're going to tie our body material in, I'm using some rayon chenille in a yellow. This is a fine, size fine. And this is a, a black chenille, also in a size fine. It's up to you how you want to do this. I like to tie this where the black is on the far side. And I am tying this in such that it is on the side of the hook and not on top. Again, what that's going to end up doing is giving me a more lateral profile for the fly. And I'm going to tie the yellow so that it is on my side of the hook. Don't want to go much past where my thread was hanging. The front third or so of this hook is going to be where the uh, thorax is. This is the abdomen. So this is going to give me a wider profile on the abdomen here. Bring my thread right up to where the abdomen ends and the thorax begins. 
And here I'm just going to put in a quick three turn whip finish and that is to secure the thread. I think that was four turns because I have to remove the thread when I go to put this in. Leave your thread long on the bobbin because we're going to pick that up again and reattach it. So here's where I'm actually doing the weave. Again, I'm going to take the black in my right hand, yellow in my left hand. I'll angle this so hopefully you can see this better. I'm going to bring the black straight over. The yellow goes around the top and then underneath the hook shank. I bring the black straight over again. The yellow goes around the top, underneath the hook shank, over on that side. I bring this around, across the top again, around, and then back over. I think I moved just a little bit there. I hope I didn't get out of focus. I'm gonna flatten this so I can see this a little bit better. Again, keeping an eye on the fact that I'm not pulling too much so that the yellow and black transition stays nice and lateral along the side. Now I'm right up to where I want the thorax to begin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my hackle pliers to that chenille. I'm going to pull that, lay that back down. That will just kind of hold it in place. I'm going to reattach my thread. And before I go any further, I just want to double check that I'm still in focus. We are good to go. So with my thread attached here, it's up to you how you want to do this. I like to attach the black and the yellow on top of the hook shank. Others may like to do one more wrap or whatever and bring it down around on the bottom. I just assume do it on the, the top. So I'm gonna bring my thread over and I'm gonna grab both those bits of chenille. what that does for me is is it keeps you know the yellow and black alternating up here on both sides and it looks more uniform at least it does to me i'm going to cut the yellow off we're done with that wrap a few more wraps to secure that i'm going to put, bend back or pull back the black Wrap that down a little bit. I want to smooth all this up just a little bit. And I'm going to put in a hackle. Now, the hackle is just a brown. Use a furnace hackle. I'm using just a brown. This is off of a whiting uh, dry fly rooster saddle. Because this is a larger size hook, I do want to make certain that I have some longer barbs here that are going to have the length that I'm looking for for the thorax. And these, these are basically just to mimic legs. I'm going to tie that in. Now I'm going to advance my thread forward. I'm not going to quite go up to right behind the eye. I want to stay about a wrap uh, thread behind that. Otherwise, um, you'll start to crowd the eye. And then again, if that wraps down over the eye, it's going to push those legs in a downward direction. My first wrap of the chenille is going to come around, covering up those thread wraps and behind the hackle. And then I'm going to wrap in front of it. And I'm going to wrap forward about four or five wraps, leaving at least an eye length between here. Then I'm coming backwards. I'm kind of reaching backwards and pulling tight on that chenille because I want my thorax to be wider. I want it to be 
a thicker, a wider diameter than the um, the abdomen. That was just barely enough chenille there. No, actually, not quite. See if I can help that out a little bit. Actually, I'm going to come back and just tie that in right here. Otherwise, I'm going to, if I try to get one more wrap in there, I'm crowding that eye. I'm going to palmer this in in kind of an open spiral. I'm going to get four, maybe five wraps of this hackle in. And this is just to suggest legs. Get those wraps in, tie this off up front. Got lucky there. It broke off right as I was wrapping that in. Trim away some of these hackles that are pointing out front. Bring this back and we'll tidy this up just a little bit. Take the head. Tie that off. Nice thing is these legs, you can still kind of scooch these legs around a little bit if they're in an odd position or something. Some head cement. Last thing is going to be to trim these if they're long and i generally like them to be maybe about half the shank length something like that you could have them a little bit longer if you want or a little bit shorter just split those up like that pull those out there and then our bitch creek is done See, I've got some here I pulled too hard with the yellow there, and that black's down too far. Now, those are consistent at least, but they should be more up there. Now, of course, my side doesn't look too bad because I was being able to look at my side. It's one of those where as you do this more, you, you get a, a feel for the right amount of tension. As you're moving the chenille back and forth to create the weave, and this gets much more consistent on both sides. Now, my guess is, because I'm focused on trying to explain it and do it at the same time, and I just got off a little bit there. But that is the Bitch Creek Excellent Nymph, great stonefly nymph, and a lot of people use it out west uh, for salmon flies as well. You can do this in a lot of different colors. You can use black or white for the legs. Uh, orange is very popular and chartreuse is also very popular for the belly. And you could use an all black hackle if that's all you have. That would probably work just fine. So there's the Bitch Creek. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.